All right, guys, we're gonna go over how to use this RV. First of all, here is your jack. There's two buttons. One is to raise and lower the jack. The other one is just for a light if you're docking at night and backing up and you wanna see, you can use that there. Also, uh, your propane tanks are, are right in here. All you do is lift this off and you'll have two tanks. It's just the same as your grill at your house. There is a selector valve in there on the top. It just points towards one tank or the other. Whichever one you're using is where, where that would point to. Hopefully you never need it, but the battery is located right behind the propane tanks here. Now, as we come around here, we're gonna talk about the storage area. This is a huge storage area. This is where you're gonna find the gear, like the sewer hose, the water hose, all that kind of stuff. There's plenty of room for you to put some stuff in here when you're traveling too. Um, there's a large awning on this guy. This is a big trailer, there's a large awning. Just remember, it, if it's windy, rainy, stormy, anything like that at all, you wanna have these awnings closed up. They are made out of aluminum. They can bend, they can twist, they can break. They're pretty easily broken if you don't take care of them. So, um, and, and the cost to replace them is 1,900 bucks. So you just don't wanna, if you break one arm or you break both, it's all the same cost, it can get expensive. So just make sure you're taking care of this. If you're, we recommend if you're literally not sitting underneath it, just keep it closed. That way you don't have a chance of, of damaging it. As we come around, we have the door entryway. Um, to access the interior, all you do is you're gonna push this door open or pull it open. There's a little magnetic latch right here. It'll latch it to the wall here. Make sure this door is completely 180 degrees out of the way. And that's how you're gonna operate the stairs. There's a lever here. You'll pull this, it unlocks it. You'll bring it down. Now, one thing I want you to notate before we get further is these little pins. There's two pins on each side. That's to adjust each leg so that we can make sure the stairs are completely level um, when you're camping. Um, if they're not level, you can damage the bottom of the door. When you go to close it, the door might not close. It'll scrape, it'll bend. So you definitely wanna make sure these are set to the right level. And to make sure they're good, what you wanna do is once this folds down, there's a little ledge right here. You wanna make sure this is pretty flush against the bottom there. If it's not, and you go to close this door, say it was up like this, as you can see, it's gonna hit and tear up the door. So just make sure that's completely level for you. Also, your, your, your uh, rail here, all you do is lift it up, twist it over, just like this, your handrail so you can get in and out. And then to close it, it's just this, the reverse process. You're gonna lift it up just like this, make sure that door's open all the way. You're gonna grab the lever, push it right past these, it'll lock it in and then you're gonna close your door. One thing you wanna do is take this guy right here. When you're traveling, you're gonna flip it over and it's actually gonna go this way. So the door, if it popped open on you, it won't fly open on the road or something. So just make sure that covers that. This is your water, your fresh water fill. So you'll take your garden hose, you're gonna fill it up. There's a monitor inside in the bathroom. You can kind of see your tank levels. Uh, just remember the tank levels inside the RV. When you push those buttons, they're just guides. They're not 100% accurate and oftentimes they are completely wrong. So just be aware of that. Um, if the water starts bubbling out or something like that, you're probably full, uh, but also check your gauge. There's a couple exhaust vents right here. These can get warm. So just make sure you're not leaving any gear against the trailer or anything like that. You don't ever wanna lean anything against the trailer anyways, because if you do, you walk inside, it does wobble a little bit when you're inside and it can start to scrape the outside of your trailer. So you don't want that to happen either. As we come here, this, this little spigot thing right here is for dumping the tanks. So you put your sewer hose on there. This is for flushing the black water. Anytime you're running water through this to flush and clean the black tank, you wanna make sure the black valve on the dump side is completely open. Don't ever run water through here unless that valve is open. The one thing you do not wanna do is backfill the toilet up into the RV and that can happen if you do not have that black valve open and you're flushing the tanks through here, okay? As we come around, there is, hopefully you never need it, but there is a spare tire located back here. Um, and then some of the other stuff like the sewer dump and everything like that's gonna be on the back side here. Uh, this is your fresh water inlet from like an RV park. We don't recommend you use this. We actually recommend you fill the water tank and then just turn the pump on and off anytime you're using water. What you don't wanna do is plug in here to the city water at an RV park and their, their pressure is so high, it blows out all the water lines and floods the trailer. Or say you go hiking and then you get a water leak and you're out hiking, it'll just continue to flood the RV if, you, if, it's, if the water's on. So if you do for some reason decide to use the park water, which like I said, we don't recommend, anytime you're using it, you need to come out and turn it on Go use it, come back outside the RV and turn it off. You don't ever wanna leave it on pressurized. 
that can cause some problems with leaking. This is not like, these RVs are not like your house plumbing. They're just literally plastic fittings pushed together and, and sometimes maybe crimped a little bit. So you just wanna make sure that uh, you don't have over like heavy water pressure or something like that can that can blow out those lines and cause a big problem so as we come around we do have your stabilizer jacks each uh these are really nice because they're electric there's one that says extend and retract you'll hit the extend button these guys will come down oftentimes they come down one leg at a time it's still the same button but once it hits the ground the other leg will start to drop make sure these can get expensive if you damage them so make sure Prior to leaving, you double check that you have lifted those up off the ground and you didn't leave them down and you're getting ready to pull away and they're still touching the ground. Those will damage and bend them and they can get really expensive. So just make sure you, you retract these and bring them up prior to leaving. Right here's your power cord plug. So right here is where you're gonna plug in uh, either at the RV park or into a generator to run power. Um, if for some reason you're plugged in at a park and nothing seems to be working, 99% of the time, the park pedestal is not working correctly. Oftentimes, somebody doesn't turn the breaker on because usually if, you're, if it's, nobody's there, they're gonna have the breakers turned off. You're gonna plug in, you're gonna think, hey, this isn't getting any power. Double check and triple check your park pedestal power. Make sure it's on and the, and the, and the fuse or the breaker is turned on. Um, that's the number one call we get at RV parks is, hey, we're not getting power it's always the park pedestal, okay? So right here, this is a large slide out. It's gonna come out about four feet. Just make sure there's nothing in the way when you're extending or retracting this. Same thing on the inside. You don't want uh, an ice chest to be in the way and you go to close that and it tears up the slide out or something. So just be aware of that. As we come around, we're gonna talk down here about the sewer um, dump. So to access this, you're gonna have the sewer hose. You just literally screw it on and then there's two pole handles, one here and one here. One, this one is for the gray water, and then the other one is for the black water. Um, so you'll, you'll always do the black one first. The sewage comes out, you're gonna close it. You can run, if it's open, you can run some water through like we talked about on the other side. Then you'll close it, and then you'll pull that gray water valve, and that'll kind of clean out the sewer hose for you, okay? As we come around, we have up in the front here, your other front stabilizer jacks. Remember, these are just stabilizer jacks. They're not to level the RV or anything like that. Um, it just makes the trailer a little less wobbly when you're walking inside. So extend, retract, make sure those are up before you leave. Uh, this not, like I said, to level it so they don't lift the trailer off and adjust or anything like that. It just comes down, gets a firmer foundation for you. Uh, so it's a little bit more comfortable when you're inside. Here's that other side of that giant pass through uh, where you're gonna find all the gear. We'll head on, well, let's head on inside and we'll take a look and go over some stuff in there and show you how to use it. All right, guys, we're gonna go over how to use the interior of this RV. First of all, uh, there's a couple switches here. The one on the right right here is your interior light switch. This one is your awning light switch. And then this is the awning extend and retract button. Just remember with the awnings, if it's windy, rainy, stormy, anything like that, close them up. Uh, make sure you don't go to bed with them out or anything like that. Um, and then make sure you don't have any gear in the way when you're closing them or opening them. Uh, down here is your slide control. This is for sending the slide out, out and in. Just remember, make sure there is nothing in the way of the slide out when it's going out and also when it's coming in. Make sure you don't have your ice chests in the way or anything like that, um, uh, that would, would scrape on the floor or something like that. We're gonna go into the bedroom here. There's a couple cool features. We have the wireless charging uh, for your phone. If you, there's two circles, one on this side and one on that side. Uh, you can just set your phone down and it'll charge. That's pretty nice. Uh, one thing we want to go over are these sliding doors. There is locks on these. The one thing you don't want to do is keep this unlocked and leave your campsite. This while you're driving will bang and, and probably break off. So just make sure you always keep these guys locked just like that, especially when you guys are in, in transport, like moving around, driving, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> there is a good TV here. Um, there is also a built-in DVD player. You can access that right here on the back side of the TV. It is part of the TV. It's built in. And then we always have the remote control right here for you. Um, as we come around, we have a nice sofa that also turns into a bed. It's just a jackknife bed. So all you do, you'll lift up on this and pull it out and it becomes one big bed. And then this also is a huge sleeper right here. Any large guy or couple kids, can sleep on this. To make this into a bed, you just remove these two poles. You're just gonna lift the tabletop up and off, remove the two poles, and then this um, tabletop 
goes right on top of these squares right there, the supports. And then you take the back cushions and they go over and that creates the sleeping surface. So it's really nice. Um, as we come around here, you have a microwave, you have a stovetop burner right here. Just remember, this is not a glass cooktop. You're gonna flip this up, you're gonna flip it over just like this, and now that becomes your, black, your backsplash uh, for like, so stuff doesn't get on the back here wall. Um, also, if, you, if you're gonna be using water, I'll show you where the water pump is. We always recommend, like we were talking about before, that you always just fill the water tank and then use the pump pressure uh, to uh, use all the, the sinks and the shower. Uh, we just aren't big fans of using park water because it can the pressures can vary so much and it can damage the RV. Anyways, as we come around, we're gonna talk about the fridge and freezer. So to turn this on, you're just gonna open up the door. There's a long clip here, you just push it in. And then you have your control panel right here. There's an on, on, on off button here and then a temperature control. So you can adjust that temperature however you like your, your food in there cold. And then obviously there's a freezer as well. Uh, it also has its own temperature control in the back of the freezer there. These are, this is a very large freezer and fridge. It's awesome for an RV like this, especially since it's so big, you have a lot of people, a lot of space for your food, so that's good. Right here is your air conditioning and heating controller. Uh, it's just a thermostat. The bottom one right here will cycle through like fan, air conditioner, heater, and off. And then the up and down arrows are the temperature controls. As we come through here, we're gonna talk about um, the uh, bathroom. Now, there's a foot pedal here to flush. Now how these work is you push it halfway down and it'll fill the bowl with a little bit of water. Uh, you'll handle your business and then you will push it all the way down when you flush. Also, um, you have your controls for your, your on and off for the, um, for the shower. And then right here in the corner, you have your pump button and your hot water heater. Uh, there's one that says electric and one that says gas. You're always gonna run on gas. Uh, and the water pump button. And then right next to that is a GFCI outlet. If something's not working, um, what you wanna do is go ahead and double check that breaker just to make sure that um, it uh, isn't tripped or anything like that. Now we're gonna head back into the bunk room area. One thing I wanna talk about is another one of these door latches. Once again, make sure this is always latched and locked. You don't want this door flopping while you're driving or anything and damaging anything. So as we come back here, this is, where the business happens for the kids or or adults or whatever it's really nice this is a nice dinette where you can you can sit down and eat or put the kids back here to play video games or whatever they need to do um, same same concept here if you want to make this into a bed you just remove these two poles the tabletop drops down it'll go right on top of those blocks there and then you take the rear cushions and then that becomes the um, sleeping surface also, if you have some adults back here or anything, you can always just push this up and then there's a latch right here and there's a latch on the other side and it'll kind of be out of the way if you just want to use this as a sitting area. Um, so this is a really cool bunkhouse. It's, it's awesome. You can sleep a lot of people and you can kind of put the kids back here if you want a little bit more peace and quiet up front or if they need to take a nap or something. Lastly, right here is the breaker panel and breaker box. Just like your house will have breakers and fuses, um, this right here, if something's not working, it's, you might have tripped a breaker or something like that. That's where you would check those. So we're excited to have you into this RV. This is one of the most awesome RVs, sleeps a ton of people. It's just so family friendly. You guys are going to love it. We can't wait to see you and we'll see you soon.